It's Jaeger time. Cheers. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. That just shot through me. And it's just, that's all we do with it? Huh? Oh, it's just done. So, I guess the, the biggest uh, news to happen to us lately. The, uh, well, I mean, I would say that since I turned 18, yeah, pretty much the entire time since I turned 18, I always, like, worked in, like, a little store, you know what I mean? But, you know, if there was any store in the world I could pick to work in, it would be some kind of a head shop, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's always what it would have been. It was never a bar. Maybe the would only cool, the only one that would be on par, a bar would be cool. The only one, like, that level, to me at least, would be on par would be, like, a comic shop, maybe. That would probably be a lot of fun. But, yeah, headshot. Like, are you talking clerk jobs or just yes. jobs, period? Clerk jobs. Okay. Those those are always the ones. And having had the opportunity to actually do it was fucking... Not only do it, but get in on the ground level to where you're you're helping create the environment. You're not entering into an already established one. And that was, that was a ton of fun. And then on top of that, like, above all, then a couple years into working at a head shop, getting to work with you in that head mm. shop, like that was like the epitome of the dream. You know what I mean? Like that was fucking where it all. <sighs> that was like the energy. Crazy. You know what? I mean? Yeah, this I can't believe this is fucking happening right now. Like, oh my god. You know, maybe the only other thing that could compare would be if maybe we worked at a CD store. Mm-hmm. A CD store, yep, that was the other one. metal section. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, I could see us getting down with that. Now that you bring it up, it might actually be, like, sort of better in possibly. some ways. Because we actually, like, know a lot more about metal than we do about, like, glass. I'd say I know more about metal than I do glass. Mm-hmm. All day. Yeah. I know I've learned a lot over the last three and a half years of working at the glass shop, but... And, of course, you know way more than most people that, I mean you know, really, you know yeah find an actual blower and yeah exactly and on top of all that one mm-hmm. of the first mm-hmm. things I discovered was how difficult it was to find any reliable information on it like you can't research this shit like mm-hmm. because there's so many different fucking terminologies that are different per region mm-hmm. in the United States alone it, it, glass blowers in Detroit use different terminology than they do in Lansing it's wow. weird so it's a very strange market to navigate and even uh and I've before I ever worked there I I you know I ordered like a pipe online once and it came and it was like completely different than what the picture showed and I didn't like it that much at all you know what I mean like such a the internet well, for for whatever reason nobody's found a way to utilize the internet for the glass blowing market like nobody's found a good way to do it go to any head shop's website most of them are shit mm-hmm. and like don't have anything if they even have a website I've never been to a good glass shop's website the, clo- the best one I say I've ever been to was a place called Soup casa in lansing they have a decent website but you can't buy anything off it it's more of a gallery hey sh- this is what our store is it's more of an advertisement than something you sell on. <clears throat> right so it, it you know i definitely learned have learned a lot but sadly uh we found out here about a week or two ago something like that that the store will be closing on may 31st will be the last day it's open to the public so that sucks yeah that blows yeah, it sucks pretty bad. It's kind of the end of a dream that I had. And, you know, there's a million different reasons why, but at the at the end of the day, I mean, I got to do it. It's so did you. We not only that, we got to do it together. Yeah. Like that's oh man. <laughs> like that's something we've done. We've worked in a fucking head shop together. Like because you gotta understand people. Like there's been point in times where Preston and I were standing in a Best Buy looking at CDs to give you an idea of how long ago that was. <laughs> and the sales clerk walked by us without breaking stride, went, Jay, Silent Bob, how's it going? And kept walking. <laughs> <laughs> just kept walking like it was nothing. And there was another time where Preston and I were sitting at a bar in Lansing. And we were ha- just chilling, having some drinks, doing nothing, minding our own business. Someone gets up, this girl gets up, and this is a large bar. This was like a big, big bar, big room, at least that we were in. She gets up from the other side of the room, comes all the way across the room up to a stranger's table, our table, and goes, can I just say how much you guys look like Jay and Silent Bob? I just can't even believe, like, she just went on about how much we look like. So our whole fucking lives, ever since we grew out our hair, when we first started growing out our hair and it wasn't, like, long yet, it was that awkward in-between people called uh, us the Hansons. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. I remember that. A lot. A lot of people call us the Hansons, and then it turned into Jay and Silent Bob. And so the idea of, like, working as clerks in a head shop together, it kind of, like, always was this extra special thing that, ah, man, that I'm always going to appreciate having had the opportunity to do, you know? What we'll do, man, is we'll just buy a head shop at some point. That's way better than working at one. Just that's true. Working, being an employee. Yeah, that's true. Owner. Or our own CD store. Mm-hmm. Or record store, or whatever. I think, honestly, I'd like that more. Get a little bit of a fucking high fidelity. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, there's... Yeah, like customers. <laughs> if we own the place, we can do whatever we want. Yeah, exactly. Apparently in Europe, I, can't, I just saw this somewhere. I can't remember where. I know, but I know it was like one of the fucking million goddamn music documentaries I've been watching in the past two weeks. Is somewhere in there. Somebody said that in Europe, uh, like rock and roll or heavy metal bars or clubs are like a big thing. And it's something that never like, they said it's something that never really like caught on in the United States for some reason. Like car rock heavy metal clubs? Well, so or like, like instead of, logo. well, yeah, instead of fucking going out to the club and hearing all the fucking like, I don't, I don't know what the, I don't know what they play in clubs now. Twerk? Whatever you can twerk dance to. Dance music. Dance. Dance. Love music. Yeah, okay, that's what we'll go with. Instead of that, it's just heavy metal, just nonstop heavy metal, and it's where, you know, it's it's somewhere for, it's it, the impression that I got, because I don't know, but the impression that I got was it's somewhere for people like us, fans of the music, to go when there's no concerts in town. Mm-hmm. You know, some something to do on a normal night, yeah. you know? Well, they're kind of, it's not, I mean, what, you got fucking up? Uh... Not small, it's the place in fucking one town. Max. Except they're, they're actually getting big days. They're not open unless they have a concert yeah, see, playing, so... Oh, yeah. yeah, that's... Remember uh, Total Escape in Flint? Yeah. They well, wasn't that like a gaming place? It was a gaming place, and then they'd have just random concerts every single week. Yeah. It was like every Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Never big bands just go down there and hang out at the place. And fucking, they didn't serve drinks. But uh, there was East of April, it was just constantly local bands would play there every weekend. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm not, I'm not saying a place that necessarily has live music all the time. Oh. Yeah. What? Oh, just a bar that plays metal? Yeah, only. Oh, just metal bars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Basically. We, we never see those. No. No. It's not enough people. That's not, well, I don't know. I don't know. If, you, if we lived in a big enough city, maybe Flint. I mean, I, mean I, I think so. I kind of think so. You know, I just went to a fucking sold out Parkway Drive show. You know what I mean? Like, if the machine shop was open seven days a week, there'd probably be people there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I would go there to have a drink if yeah. I could on a normal night. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I, you know. We should do that. Yeah, and that's we'll something to think about. Store, it? Yep. With a recording studio. That's oh, my God. Podcast. <laughs> oh, my God. And then, you know, we'll just make sure it's on a large enough property to where we can just, like, Clear out a massive area in the back and put in a drive-in. Put it in a drive-in. <laughs> that acts as a second, as a fucking parking lot. Stage. I mean, let's be real, dude. That's always, in a sense, even in in a sense, including but almost more so than being in a band. It's we we always like we've always wanted to own something that's everything we love yeah. in one spot. We want to make a movie theater <laughs> slash taco place slash CD store slash concert venue slash like. <laughs> Yeah. Like everything, everything we love is just in one place. I don't know. Maybe maybe that kind of thing would work. Nobody's doing it. Nobody's doing anything like that. Absolutely not. And and and, and we're in a point in time where well no, that's bullshit. What I was about to say was I was about to say we're at a point in time where people going out to big places like that is over because for some reason I was thinking of like malls. I don't know why I was thinking like that. But no, that's that has I don't know why I thought that. But we could buy a mall. A closed down mall. The mall Eternity. of a hundred shop venues. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Every night you have a hundred. Yeah. Well, say how many? Say we take. All right. Uh, the place in my area that that's going down, Cortland Center. There's what maybe thirty shops in Cortland mm-hmm. Center. Probably. We get every night three ba- three bands for each venue. And the ninety bands. No. It, and you could turn a fuck ton of those like just little shops or whatever into and, recording studios that you then rent out. And to locals. CD stores. And, and CD stores. Yep. Everything. Metal ex- exclusive fucking yep. t shirt shorts. Shops. Oh my god. Don't forget your fucking. We should gear. just buy Dort Highway Mall. Yeah, to the Dort. <laughs> we'll leave Paradise. Right. Paradise gets to stay. Right? It'd be fucking. That would be awesome. Right. That would be awesome. And oh, what if we had. We could have the Ultimate Glass Shop too. Because we could yeah, have. Right. We could also have. Like, have the Glass Shop. 
con- like connected to the shop next door, which is in turn into a studio for glass blowers that want to come in and blow glass and rent space whenever yeah. they want. Dude, if we were billionaires, so many people would have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> we would be doing so much shit. Yeah, we've got a. A uh, music store, recording studio, glass shop, and t-shirt shop <laughs> in every major city in America. Yeah, right. yeah. no, yeah, that's pretty much what, how it would go down. Ah, God, that's amazing. Have a head shop, you walk in, the walls are titanium. It's fucking, it's just Whoa. like the ceiling's like, we have fucking the greatest glass blowers below us of ceiling. Oh, like they would do <laughs> Make us a cathedral ceiling out of glass. Holy shit. That would be epic. Oh my <laughs> god. That's like a giant stained glass window almost, sort of like kind of thing. glass windows. Blown glass windows. Oh, god. Dude. <laughs> Is that possible? I, it would be. Yeah. You think someone can blow us a glass pane? I don't. Oh my I don't god. see why not. Why hasn't anyone done that in the shop? I don't know. That's in, just, it's fumed. That's a tint. Yeah. Well, now, now you can, now they have different kind of glass, like, uh, uh, okay, let's put this in context a little bit. All right. So those of you who don't know what fumed glass even is. Okay. So there's, there's regular, you know, clear glass, and then you can fume glass, which is when, when you're, when you're working with it in the flame, in between you and the glass, in, in between the glass and the flame, you put like a piece of gold or a piece of silver. And the flame spits that gold or silver onto the glass, therefore fuming it. And when you smoke out of a pipe and it changes color, that means it's fumed. That's what's, that's what is causing it to change color. Now though, they have this glass where there's, there's a million, they got like terp, terpene glass, they got serum glass. All this different kind of glass that's, uh, typically when you see something that says UV reactive, it means it glows under black light. But this serum, this other kind of t- terpene glass, uh, new stuff that's coming out, and those are just two names. There's a million different names. They are also UV reflective, but in the sense that they, they change color in sunlight yeah. instead of under black light. So you make a window that literally at night looks blue, daytime looks orange yeah. or something. That would be dope. Yeah, dude. That would be Duh. fucking insane. Or, I mean, a giant, if our shop had UV windows, we had black lights. Oh, it's so the windows, windows just gold. Just gold. Oh, damn. That would I be mean, awesome. What, what if you could just fucking do a rim of UV around the outside, on the inside do that, just do the dichro, clear dichro, oh. with the sparkles in it, like the one pipe we have? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yep. With the fucking that UV strip really around cool. the outside. So yeah, it just there's... Instead of buying a light bar like we have, the lights around it, mm-hmm. just glowing UV. Oh my god, that would be fucking insane! It's just go- yeah, that would look so cool. Dichro is so when you, if you've ever been to a glass shop and looked at pipes, and a dichro one is the one that looks like it's got sparkles all over it, like the Milky Way or something. Like it kind of looks like that, just covered in like sparkles and rainbow different color sparkles. A lot of them are green. A lot of green them are green. Dichro. Yeah. But that's what, that's what dichro means. That would be fucking, oh my god. A whole window just glowing. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Yeah. That's, oh Alien god. Technology yeah. Shit, that would, that wouldn't even look real. Like, yeah. almost. Like, god, that would look so neat. On a sunny day, the inside of the shop would just be fucking green, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but that would be dope. It would look cool. That would be dope. Yeah. And the, Walls are black. That would, wouldn't even matter. Yeah. They're white walls. So. Oh, man. That now would be so fucking sick. Blown glass windows. Why is that not a thing yet? It will be. Maybe it is. Maybe, Maybe it is, it but is. it's Maybe. not like just in the okay. same market that we've been working in. Do you think some, we could get someone to blow us with glass? Oh, man. What about just fucking a flat pane of UV fucking shit putting picture frames? So you can make your picture frame glow? Just the picture. Yeah. Yeah. What about art? Like that. Oh, yeah. It would just be green. It would literally yeah. just glow green because yeah. the black would fucking... That would be fucking insane. That would be fucking insane. If you've seen uh, any of our pictures, you'd see DJ hanging on the wall there. Mm-hmm. Picture one of the studio pictures on Instagram and Facebook. On the right-hand side of the picture, on the wall, there's a picture of a face that's a friend DJ's face. He honestly is a huge... I Put it this way. If things had gone differently, he would be the third host of this right. podcast yeah. every episode like 
he would he would be this podcast <laughs> in a big bad way. Yeah, we'd already have a viral episode if he no were doubt about if it. he were on here with yeah without question. He was, uh, man. you know, that's one of the things I think about too. Because I mean, one of the big influences of for, for 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 me personally to start this was is currently Kevin Smith and all of his podcasts that I listen to. And you know, anybody who's ever listened to a Kevin Smith podcast where he talks Kevin Smith at all, not even necessarily a podcast where he talks about Jay. And he says, like, the main reason why... He, he said this, like, okay, so this is fresh in my mind because they just dropped the episode of Jay and Silent Bob Get Old that they recorded in Detroit that I saw a couple months ago. They just dropped it yesterday. And I was listening to it again, and they said... he Kevin Smith said that... And he said this a million different times, but he said on that one, like, in this way... That the only reason why he put Jay in Clerks was because he thought, because Kevin thought he was so funny, he wanted to see if other people did too, kind of a thing. Like, the Jay you see in Clerks is just Jay acting like Jay. That's all, we, like, Jay and Silent Bob, Jason Mewes is just, that's who he is, is Jay. You're not getting much acting, you're just getting his character being written into a script who he actually is being written into a script and that's what we get on screen. So that it's kind of that same in a sense with, you know, Kevin Smith says it in that kind of like the way he says it, it could all, some people could argue it could almost come off as a little bit mean, but it's mostly just a joke. Him kind of like ragging on his friend a little bit, you know what I mean? Right. But it's that same like sentiment of, uh, of having like the idea, just the idea of putting DJ on a public forum or a podcast or a movie or anything like that. That would have been that. Like, we think he's so funny and amazing. We want to see if other people do too, you know? Uh, oh, they would. Oh, they would. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Yeah. Some people would hate him. Though. Most probably. Uh, not, not. I don't. It would have been one of those things that got really, really big, but controversial. Yeah. I mean, like well, if you fucking show it to a bunch of Bieber fans. Yeah. Yeah. But, but if you show up to a bunch of Guar fans... Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. A burn the priest listening party. Yeah. These guys are gonna like him. <laughs> yeah. He... I don't think we've ever really brought him up on this show, but yeah. He was definitely one of the greatest people. Mm. I have never met another person like him. Other than his parents, who look like him, and that's mostly the top. Basically... The mostly, look. Yeah. yeah. I mean... No, I've never met anybody else like him either. He, he was, was... Very true to himself. <laughs> He didn't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. He was honest with his feelings. And mm -hmm. if he wanted to bang a 400-pound chick, he was going to bang that 400-pound <laughs> chick, and he would do it with you in the room. <laughs> he did not give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. It, he was the epitome of no fucks given. Yeah. And that was so beautiful. But he had a, he had a heart of gold. <laughs> it was yeah. Like, I yeah. mean... He would shoot a coon and her baby if you had it. Like, hey, it happened once. His mom caught some raccoons <laughs> and fucking, it's like, ah, when he heard, kind of let him run around and he shot him. But at the same time, it could be tender. You know? Man of feelings. I remember. That could be sadistic. I mean, he <laughs> was everything. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. I would, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I never, I, I don't think, yeah, I guess you could say sadistic, but. I at least was never aware of him or saw him, you know, like harm animals, or, you know, not like that kind of sadistic. I don't think maybe I don't know, but like for fun in a fucked up way, what kind of animals we talking like we fucked with a wasp pretty bad once. Oh, yeah, we did Remember that shit. Yeah, we, we tortured a wasp. Tortured a wasp. <laughs> tortured a wasp. <laughs> well, fuck a wasp. Yeah. They'll try to fuck you. They'll try to fuck yeah. you up, so fuck a wasp. Yeah. Well, one time I came It was this. trying to come at us. Yeah, that's why we caught yeah. it. Yeah, that's how it died. There was one time. I mean, it involved me doing some grizzly things, too. Walk into the, the pole barn. It's possible that I've referenced the pole barn, because the pole barn is a thing. A yeah. big thing in our, my development as a fucking man. Like, yep. I be partially became a person in that pole barn. And uh, I walk out there, and uh, he's like, dude, we killed a bat. I'm like, what? And there's a bat on the ground. He's like, yeah, man, I was fucking flying around and I fucking batted it. Like, what? Yeah, I hit it with a fucking uh, tennis racket. He might have said I racketed it. He said something <laughs> funny. I don't know. I and, racketed uh, it. No, I think he said I batted it. 
And uh, I'm like, Jesus Christ. And then they s- said they stabbed it with a sword. He had a sword. Oh. Yeah. And uh, we're standing there and fucking, <laughs> it, starts, it starts moving. I'm like, oh my God. And they're like, oh shit. And God, duty might have been with him. Who was with him? I cannot remember. Oh, well, I'm talking about the season. No. He, uh, they're like, ah, fuck it. I was like, no, fuck this. So I took a sledgehammer and smashed it. Well, you put it out of its misery. Yeah, they wouldn't do anything about it. Yeah. It was definitely going to die. Yeah. So I took a sledgehammer and I disintegrated it. Yeah, Instantaneously. You know, for some reason, <laughs> that's what people do to me. Like, people... It kind of reminds me of the episode of The Office, you know, where they had a bat. And everybody was just freaking out. And I remember one time I was... Uh, when I was at my parents' house. I was living at my parents' house. And I was in the basement. And I'm just, I was watching a show. I was in the middle of like watch, like in the middle of a series or something. And I was binge watching it. And I hear blood curdling <laughs> screams, dude. No. Blo- like I feel, I, it, it was, it was a fight or flight reaction. And I went into fight and I was like, oh my God, my dad's dead. Cause my mom, <laughs> my mom was screaming. Yeah. So I thought my dad just died. <laughs> like I thought dad just had a heart attack and was died or something. Like, like, like I was in fight or flight. I was in fight and I just heard this honest, to, like the most honest blood curdling scream I've ever heard in my life come and I recognized it from my mother, you know? So I'm instantly like on mega alert and I fucking book it up the stairs anticipating blood or a dead body yeah. or someone with a gun or something. My, God, my, my mom goes, there's a bat! <laughs> <laughs> there was a fucking bat in the house. Like, <laughs> oh my God. I fucking, I fucking, uh, I fucking got, uh, it, it like landed on the ground, like behind, they had like a, like a big wooden corner hutch thing. And it, like, landed behind that, so we, like, moved the hutch, and it just stayed in the corner. So I just, like, real slowly got real close to it. I put it in some kind of a container. I entrapped it somehow. Like, real slow, just nice. Had it in my hands, was, like, looking at it and shit, and just let it out, and it was fine. (laughs) We always had tons of bats living in that big... We had a giant ass pine tree in front of our house, and we always had bats living in there, but we never had mosquitoes. Never had mosquitoes. So that was great. You know, I don't want to leave off, uh, I don't want to end our conversation about DJ with a story about him killing an (laughs) animal. Killing Killing a bat. (laughs) One of my favorite animals. Yeah. No, that, I don't. (laughs) I'm trying to think of something. Like one of, what's one of the random great things he did? All right, I'll, I'll, I got that. But right. real quick, side note: he did slap a pigeon once, and it was hilarious. A wild pigeon. Who else do you know that can do that? That was like some Matrix shit. I didn't even see it, but like I can imagine it, and it makes me <laughs> smile right every up, time I think about it. He walks right up noise. to a pigeon yeah. and smacked it. It was fine. It flew away. Yeah, it flew away. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh no! If it, it flew away, we were on the top of a parking structure, and uh. It flew away, and God, I'm trying to fucking think about how to describe this. There's, you know how you're at the top, and you can only go down. Yeah. So you fucking say, all right, we're facing the entrance to the ramp that goes down. Okay. And the floor below it. Okay. So fucking, he slaps the pigeon. Pigeon fucking, it didn't hit the ground. It, like, went over the edge. <laughs> and we were standing over the little area where you drive into. Okay. So, shapes like this. It's like that. Yeah. So, fucking, he slaps it, the bird drops, whoo, catches itself in midair, starts and to fly away, away, lands, starts flying again, and I guess it try, it decides that it wants to fly into the parking structure, and it just goes straight into the wall. Oh my god. It flew straight into the wall, landed, and then it got up, and then flew away. So, it was, it was disoriented. Yeah, it was yeah, disoriented. It was disoriented. We were like, oh my god. I was a little pissed. I couldn't believe he just slapped a fucking pigeon. <laughs> he gave it to him. And then, I mean, his back leg lifts up off the ground. Oh, Jesus. Violently attacking animals. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to throw it out there. I didn't think you'd yeah. go into it, but... Oh, yeah, I mean, those were just hilarious. That that story is just... The idea of anybody just being able to get close enough to a pigeon to even touch it, let alone yeah. smack it, is hysterical to me. <laughs> well, what were you gonna say about the, something good he did? He made a f- bunch of fat chicks 
lives very good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did he, do that. He loved them. Loved, like, yeah, genuinely. Like, yeah. he was someone who was in, what's, what's the word? When you don't care about looks. When you don't care about how. Oh, he was not shallow. Shallow. There we go. He was not shallow. He all. was the least shallow, like. No. And. And we're talking chicks that can't fit into the back of a Ford Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> like, like. Backseat of an SUV is off limits. Please. Talking about very large human beings that great people probably did not experience a lot of positive affection yeah. in their oh, lives. Yeah. And they were all cool people. Yeah, they were cool we people. were all. We yeah. always hung out yeah. with all of them. You couldn't like. I didn't hang out and chill with any of them. Absolutely, not sexually attracted. Nope. But I'd still fucking be friends with any. Absolutely, of them. they were all good. People. Except Janice, she ended up fucking them all. Day. She At was. She day. ended up being. A bad person, but that's kind of what Michigan State University does to you. <laughs> so, maybe it's not entirely her fault. And for the record, I'm a graduate of Michigan State University, so I can talk as much shit about it as I want. I mean, he's a prime example of the failures. Exactly. <laughs> no, I exploited the system. Yeah? You know, it, the, the fact that I graduated with a bachelor's degree speaks to <laughs> how fucked their entire education system is. Yeah. I shouldn't have been able to do what I did, and I did it. And after a whole, and, you know, after you, a whole nine years, dude, <laughs> I what? went to hey. Michigan State University after nine years of college and got, hey, got oh, hold on, I was only I wasn't degree. I wasn't at Michigan State for nine years. <laughs> I wasn't there for nine years. I went to a community college first. No one should be able to pull this off. Lots of people go to college for nine years. Yeah, they're called doctors. doctors. <laughs> Shut up, Richard. <laughs> I mean, I always, going there, I always genuinely kind of like did feel like the comedian in The Watchmen. Uh? It's all a fucking joke. <laughs> but back to DJ. DJ... Was I mean uh, those those times where he did, he did Janice went to Michigan State obviously I live in Lansing right on um, right next to Michigan State and I went there and I grew and I went to high school in East Lan- at East Lansing High so I grew up la- largely I was born in Detroit but largely grew up mostly in the East Lansing area Lansing area so when one of my best friends from Flint got a girlfriend in Lansing. You know, I was pretty happy because all of a sudden he was coming out here or out to Lansing all the time and stuff. I got to see him on a pretty regular basis at that point and introduce him to people I never thought I would have been able to introduce him to and go places with him I never thought I could have gone. You know what I mean? Like, it was a blast. Like, yeah, I, I loved hanging out with him out there. And I mean, but uh, something good he did. I mean, he was... The third, the third and only other legit member of vaccination. Oh, yeah. Very nice. So, ladies and gentlemen, the name Lost in the Dark actually originates from a song Preston and I wrote over 12 years ago now for our band Vaccination, and DJ was our third member. Yeah. Yeah. Lost in the Dark. I mean, this, that's part of him. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll never forget, like, I was, I was so mad when he, like, I wasn't like I, like he ran away. Remember when he ran away? When he came back, the only thing I was mad about that was that he sold his base. Yeah. Oh, when he ran. No, he didn't sell it. He left it in oh. Arkansas. He fucking. I thought he <laughs> sold it in Tennessee. Oh, I think he told me that he left it at her uncle's house. I'll give me some details on this fucking story, dude. Uh, he, he, they decided that they were gonna hitchhike to fucking Arkansas, and they did it. They fucking uh prostituted their way down there. DJ, a girl that he had been with since he was probably 14, 15 years old. Mm, and yeah, at least, what, what was he, 19 at the time when they ran away? I don't know. I don't I, that, know. that I couldn't tell you. I don't know, yeah. Uh, yeah, they hitchhiked. Alright, then had a twin and the, she was there and her boyfriend was there. They fucking hooked up with a bunch of Johns, got money, they fucking uh, hitchhiked most of I think the whole way. Somehow they got money for food and shit. I fucking dudes. I was trying to think. Maybe they paid for the bus. They never took the bus. They hitchhiked. But at one point, they were in a parking lot. Dude pulls out a gun and uh, fucking, I think he had his arm around her. He pulled out a gun, pointed it at DJ, and he said, she's mine. I'm taking her. And uh, DJ, like a fucking boss, pulls out a fucking knife. 
He had a switchblade, I believe, in his pocket. Pulls it out, puts it to the guy's fucking face and says, you're not fucking taking these girls. He noticed that the fucking gun didn't have a clip in it. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, the guy's gun didn't have a clip in it. So fucking, he, oh takes, he pulls out his fucking knife, puts it to the dude's fucking face and says, no, you fuck you. Holy yeah. shit. DJ yeah. was James Bond. Dude, dude no. What the a, fuck? He's the goofiest motherfucker. You would never suspect that this guy fucking would have the balls that he did. But right, I that's absolutely him, true. I've seen him fucking haul off and try to blast fucking Crumb right in the face. I've seen him tackle basically most people that fucking, almost everyone that ever tried to bully him and pick on him. Like, he's fucking crazy. Yeah. Not crazy. He was smart. Very smart. He got A's all throughout school. Really? Yeah. I remember going over to his house to get drunk because his mom used to buy Seagram 7 and fucking his report card was sitting on the fucking fridge. All A's. I think he had one B. Yeah. What? Yeah. That is genuinely mind-blowing. Wow. Crazy. He, he was a genius. This is someone that ended up dropping out of high school. Out of the alternative. Oh my god. Yeah. Crazy. He could have been Sherlock fucking Holmes, dude. He was a goddamn genius. And we were some of the only ones that understood him. I still have some of his writings. Right. What do you mean writings? Some of his fucking work. What work? His what? songs. Songs? Yeah. I have DJ work. What? Yeah. We need to make these songs. Them. Finish them. No, they're finished. Record them. Oh, yeah. Make them live yeah. forever. Yeah. That is what we should do. Yeah. Holy fuck. I didn't know you had that. What the fuck? I have some new ones. Yeah. We should record that shit. We should put it on recording and put it on the internet forever. So it's there. You know? Yeah. We'll put it on our goddamn YouTube page. What about another DJ story? You know, we have so many. Uh, fuck, fuck. I'm, uh... He flies his ass down to fucking Florida. I was living in Florida at the time. Okay, yep. so there was, uh, what year was that? That was 2010. 2010. I was not 21 yet. No, he was coming down for my birthday. So, yeah. Coming down for your 21st it, birthday. Yeah, it was March so, 2010. Probably mm-hmm. March 1st. 2011. I turned 21 in 2011. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so it was 2011. So, 2011, you were at that point in time living <sighs> where in Florida? Homosassa. Homosassa. I Homo always Sassa. fucked that up. I never I'm remember I'm talking five miles right. south of the Crystal River. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Pop my south the Crystal River. You can't miss it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Sassa. <laughs> I'm a Sass, Florida. And I've been there. All right. Uh, so you dude, were living there at Manzies. the time. Whoa. With one of our other fucking best Brandon friends Hammond. in the motherfucking goddamn world. Yeah, I miss that guy every day. I, dude, so do I. Brandon, does he listen to this? I don't think he knows about it. Well, we should probably yeah. let him know. Because he should be on it. He, yeah. If he still lived here, he'd be the third yeah. host. Yeah. Every day. Brandon, right get your ass home. God. I do. I I seriously, I honestly do think about him on a very regular basis and do miss him day. a lot. But, uh, so. Living down in Homo <sighs> with Brandon. The whole thing's fucked up. I actually fucking ended up, I lived about two and a half hours from Orlando. He was flying into North, Orlando. south, east, west. It would be northwest. Okay. So. You go straight west from Orlando. Okay. It's it's north. It's, oh my God, I think it's an hour and a half north of Tampa. Okay. You just ride the coast. It's on the coast. I'm, I leave there, pick him up from the fucking airport. I had my tire hat actually blow out on the highway. And because my car is weird, I had weird 19-inch tires in the back. And uh, they had a hard time finding him. I actually spent, ended up spending $500 on one Pirelli. Jeez the only Christ. thing they could find was a fucking Pirelli. So I ended up buying that. And uh, <laughs> while I was at the shop, while he was just meandering around the fucking <laughs> the giant airport, he found a chick. He ended up talking to this fucking girl that was going to Homosassa. So fucking, he ended up getting a hotel room with a random girl. DJ? Yeah, it was crazy. And, uh, I fucking go over there. I drove to the fucking hotel room that they're at. He's fucking got little, like, cups filled with water. Dixie cups with water. Cigarettes in them. Oh, my like, God. Ten ashtrays around the room. And fucking, I had money. And so she fucking, uh, took me to the fucking store. And we actually bought some booze. Drank a fifth of Syrah. And then... I took him back to the house, and, uh, huh, we're hanging out. My mom came down, and, uh, I went to Orlando with my mom. When I come back, I think it was three days later, DJ's gone. Brandon doesn't know where he went. He ended up leaving with the girl that we met at the fucking, at the fucking, uh, airport. <laughs> airport. And, uh, 
I get a phone call from DJ. Dude, I need your help. I'm like, what? He's like, I'm in a fucking hotel room. This guy's telling me he's going to beat my ass. He said he's going to fucking kick my ass. I don't know what uh, what to do. I'm like, oh, uh, all right. Okay, man. Uh, we'll be there immediately. And he's like, okay, bye. We fucking... Brand and I look at each other. We had fucking in Florida, switchblades, brass knuckles, fucking all this shit is legal. So we're fucking loading our pockets of fucking weaponry. <laughs> and uh, so we fucking showed up. We were literally a mile away. We were there like that. And uh, knock on the door, walk in. The guy's sleeping. <laughs> Later, DJ told us that this guy was awake less than a. The, he fell asleep. Fell asleep. Quote, unquote. Quote, unquote. unquote. The second we walked in the door, he was awake. We didn't know this when we went in there. DJ was the only one that knew this dude was awake before we fucking walked in. He just slumped over. Fucking, uh, yeah, he had been on meth and they fucking robbed him. They stole a bunch of shit and he was trapped in this fucking hotel room. They were using his credit card to pay for the hotel. DJs? And, yeah, and to buy a bunch of other <laughs> shit. And we're in there like, fucking, oh man, this is, fuck this guy. We just steal all the shit because he had, he was running around stealing shit from people. So we had bags like drills and fucking a bunch of Dale Earnhardt shit. We should <laughs> take all of his shit. And uh, we didn't. We didn't take anything. We just left with DJ. But uh, yeah, that was after like he met up with them, ended up doing meth for like three days straight. DJ had never done meth before this. It's just, he's just in Florida meeting random people, having literally his own adventure. Like, by himself. By himself. He's got his own storyline. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's yeah. fucking doing his thing. Yeah. Ends up doing meth with a bunch of crazy fucking random people getting stuck in hotel rooms and shit. We had to go fucking rescue his ass. It's fucking <laughs> crazy shit. That's fucking. Dude, see, it's, it's, it's literally. Stories like that. Okay, so I'm not someone who has read... Honestly, I haven't read very many books in my life. Like, when I try to sit down and read a book, I, like, just... My eyes get really heavy and tired, and I fall asleep. Like, I'll get, like, a chapter in, and I'll... <laughs> and I'll just, but I'm serious. I'll just fucking fall asleep. It's, it's, it's hard for some reason for me to get through something without just, like, passing out. read something that you're interested in. Until I read... Uh, for, for, oh my god, it might have been, oh yeah, dude, I think it was when you and I went with Grandma and Grandpa down to Tennessee to visit Uncle Jason. Yeah, good trip. And he told us, at some point, like, he had a copy or something like that of the book Lest We Forget, the biography of Marilyn Manson. Yes! Yep, and, I remember in this little back room. Yeah, okay. <laughs> after that, at some point in time after that trip, I bought that. And that was one of the first, like, real, like, book made for adults, you know, because I read a million Goosebumps and Michigan Chillers and, right. you know, I read a million things like that, kids' books or whatever, when I was a kid. But, like, in terms of, like, a novel, a real novel, you know, I did read uh, Tom Sawyer. I did like Tom Sawyer. Anyway, uh, in terms of, like, a real novel, like, that was one of the first ones because, like, from, like, the first page, it was just intense. I would just remember the intensity of everything. It was fucking, yeah, it was just a fucking really wild book. And all it was was this guy's story. So so it made me go, oh, okay, so, th you know, maybe this is a genre of things that I had, I literally hadn't considered before that point in time. That was, uh, yeah, so that was one of the first books that made me, like, kind of go, okay, so maybe the genre of, like, you know, autobiography of stories of the life of people that, you know, I, you know, musicians or whatever that I'm interested in, uh, is something that I might like. So that was one of the first things that made me ever go down that path to begin with. And yeah, cover to cover that book I read more than once just cause, and, and DJ was partly an influence for that because he was super into Marilyn Manson at a certain point too. The whole part where Manson goes to like meets Anton LaVey and fucking like all that kind of stuff was just really like gripping to me for whatever reason <laughs> and then and then being interested in that i feel like kind of primed me like reading that book i feel like kind of primed me for getting as deep into the jay and silent bob get old podcast as i did especially going back all the way to episode one of that podcast because the first hundred episodes or so are jay's fucking autobiography it's it's the it's the jay's lest we forget book on tape 
Yeah. You know, it's all of his craziest, most wild and intense stories. And it's stories like that about DJ that are almost ripped from those exact fucking pages, dude. Yeah. It's those exact same kind of stories. He was one of them. You know what yeah. I mean? He was one of them. He was one of those fucking just crazy eccentric great ones, you know? He did not follow the fucking status quo. There was no status quo to him. Yeah, that didn't even exist. No. No, especially, I mean, well, it really didn't. We can't we can't speak we can't speak much to before at least I certainly can't speak much to before we met him. I met him when he was in the 4th grade, so What? Really? Yeah. Holy sixth. shit. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. God, I never thought about it like that. Wait, you were in sixth grade when you went to Davidson? Went to Davidson? Yes, yeah. Wow. That puts things in unique perspective I've never had before. What? <laughs> I, I just never, I, I never really, like, knew that timeline for you. I never knew what grade. I always assumed it was a little bit, it was after elementary school for some reason. Well, it in fucking Lincoln Park, elementary school goes through sixth grade, and then it's seventh and eighth for middle school and then high school. That's what it was in East Lansing. Yeah, but in Davison, elementary school ends at fourth grade. Fifth and sixth grade are intermediate school, seventh and eighth are high school. No, middle, middle school. school. And then, wow, weird. Uh, yeah, a little bit, man. But not cool. <laughs> why did I start talking about that? Uh, yeah, why does it doesn't matter? If I, I knew him in element when he was in element. No, I stuff. can't speak to before I knew him personally. Yeah. But I mean, I'll never forget the first. But when we like, when I at least first met him, he was, you know, a little bit more status quo. When you see. met him, yeah. Oh, I mean, because he, because we, because we, because yeah. we were, because to no, no, you, to you turned, and me, he turned into exactly. You know, we to, like, like from your and my perspective, you and I, like this was before we were even that into metal. So from. How, your my perspective, you and I were not extreme. We were normal. Yeah. We were just normal, you know? At that age, we were just normal. But to DJ, we were extreme. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then as we got to know him more, he became more extreme than we ever went. In a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. In every way. Every really. Way. Yeah. I mean, this so, man ended up in a, in a legitimate gunfight with uh, Cobras. In front. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Maybe, I mean... Gunfight. When they were shooting at his house? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I do Gunfight. Yeah. Went through a box. Uh, they called me. Dude, we're running out of bullets. Oh, my God. Gunfight. Bunch of fucking cobras. They fucking... Uh, ben and someone else, they were laying in flank and someone else were laying on the floor. And uh, the next day, there was a bullet in the couch right between them. Jesus like, They were laying Christ. under the couch, I think. Because he had a weird one that was lifted up off the ground. They were laying underneath it. Right above them, in between them. It was like, Jesus right where the, I think it was right where the base of the leg was. Damn. That's fucking crazy shit. Yeah, no, he was fucking loading up that gun, popping out the fucking door, fucking shooting back at him. What the fuck? Yeah, full on gunfight in at the ghetto. Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan. The ghetto. Up Franklin, Oklahoma, Minnesota, motherfucker. Yeah, Flint, Michigan. The ghetto. Crazy ghetto. Anything you want to happen could happen. Fucking fucking blowjobs and fucking anything. It's fucking the wild west. It is the wild. It is the wild west. Fucking west. Uh, we were throwing fucking mortars on Fourth of July in the streets. You know, and the, the people were driving by hanging on the windows. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gangster looking motherfuckers. Everyone That's fucking insane. They're, they're fucking. I was there on Fourth of July. Yeah. Were you there? Yeah. When we were throwing the shit out the yeah. window? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. The next year after that, there's footage of you just... No, he shot the gun that night, didn't he? He walked out on the porch and shot his gun. Oh, shot yeah. Him. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That was a fucking crazy party. Yeah, it was. What do we call it? We used to call it the trap house. Yeah, it was, it was a trap house. Yeah. yeah. It was a real trap house. Not yeah. fucking... <sighs> I've heard people call things houses in East Lansing... Trap houses. Really? I've heard it. I've heard houses I've been in in East Lansing referred to as a trap house. I looked at that person because at that point in time, I had <laughs> I'd been to the actual like, oh, shit. trap house. And I said, "Do you have you ever been to a real trap house? And they're like, here. And I'm like, no, you haven't. Because this is, this like, this is, if are you afraid of dying when you walk out of here? No. 
then you're not in a trap house. <laughs> like, uh, that's plain and simple. Just gangs of people can rip you out of your car at any second. Any second. And mutilate you. Okay. The fucking, uh, Eric. Remember, he came over that one time. He had a fucking Detroit Bad Boys hoodie on. Mm-hmm. You were like, yeah, look at that guy. I was like, yeah. Oh, uh, but fucking, he, uh, he was in fucking DJ's driveway waiting for him. And just a group of dudes just rushed up on the car, pulled him out of the car, beat his ass, robbed him, and ran away. <laughs> out of nowhere. In his driveway. Just sitting in DJ's driveway. They just fucking ran up on him. Jesus Christ. And pulled him out of the car. Yeah. Yeah. That's a trap house. <laughs> That's an actual fucking trap yeah. house. Not anything in East fucking Lansing. All right. Just wanted to make that clear. Gunfights. Gunfight. I'll tell you what. Snoopy boost. Snoopy boost. Snoopy boost. Oh, I thought we were cheersing. <laughs> that one actually has. Huffbrow. You're about to go into something. <laughs> no. Damn it! I had it. I was holding it. No. Oh, shit. I'm gonna snap it. We need a clacker. Yeah. A clacker. All right. Well, He's clacking. <laughs> <laughs> What's another story about DJ? Alright, random DJ story is, I mean, we're like talking about his character and stuff like that, but just one random one. First time we ever actually got high on weed, we were together. Fucking, he had smoked once, some crazy, some shitty shit with someone else out of a pop can and he didn't get high. And then I smoked some stuff with someone else. Oh, well, that's seriously the worst thing I smoke out. Big ass lead pipe. Oh my god! <laughs> We gorilla glued. Did you ever eat paint chips as a kid? <laughs> yeah, no. We gorilla glued. Uh, hey, I think actually, honestly, it was probably cast iron. Mm. No, not cast iron. It's shitty. Fucking oh, yeah, it looked like a lead pipe. Pretty sure you can make a mark in it with your fingernail. Oh my god, nail. But maybe not. I don't know. Galvanized steel. Oh, okay. Might have been galvanized. I don't know. Where was I going with that? No. First time we got high, he stole some a bunch of weed from us. Mom. She had two different kinds of weed. One was weird. It was like a circle. The buds were like circles. And then the other one was kind of like your traditional fucking cone-shaped nug. Well trimmed and everything. And this was fucking, I think, 2006. So fucking, you know, like a nice cone-shaped nug was not fucking... Common. Common. You're not seeing that every day. Nope. No, and fucking we sat there. We made a fucking pop can pipe, and we smoked the first big ass mug, and then we started getting into the second one. We pretty much filmed, finished it, but I remember sitting there. <clears throat> I'm trying to break up the weed. It was like everything. My vision was like zigzag. Imagine there's a zigzag in your vision in the center. Mm-hmm. And everything on the left and everything on the right are moving to the left and to the right. Mm-hmm. Independent. And I was like trying to break it up. I'm like. I think, I literally, what I said is, I think that means that I've smoked too much. <laughs> <laughs> and so I stopped breaking up and I stopped smoking. And me and him fully fucking, I ended up standing there for, I believe, an hour. About four inches from each other. <laughs> our faces. <laughs> laughing. We just stood in his living room, inches away from each other. <laughs> laughing our asses off and I see his face morphed <laughs> almost kind of like ghost bu- not Ghostbusters uh, Beetlejuice the way that the, um, two dead people yeah. they could morph their faces like out super long and shit yeah. his face fucking stretched out like down it got super long and uh, it was crazy when I was standing there laughing I f- swear to god it's Never happened again. I figured out how to laugh as hard as I possibly could and breathe at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I had a steady ah! laugh going for, I mean, seriously, maybe a half an hour to an hour, just going nonstop. And when it was happening, I was thinking, oh, my God, I figured it out. What, like inward <laughs> singing? No, I don't know. I was laughing outward. Hard, constantly, nonstop. But I figured out how to breathe while doing it, what the so fuck? I could just so I could just go, so <laughs> start laughing and not stop. <laughs> you you figured out a way to laugh without having to stop to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> I figured it out, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the first time I ever got. I never had him again. I never. <laughs> oh my god, him. that's so funny. Like he uh, hit peak, peak to the point. <laughs> yeah, he looked like almost like <laughs> give fucking Matt groaning or whatever from The Simpsons. Turn DJ into a Simpson, <laughs> and then he let like Dolly bubble his face a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, he said my fucking face is moving and shit. First time I ever got actually got high was with that guy. And the first time I got drunk was with him, too. Wow. I don't really... The first time I got drunk was definitely with you. I don't remember when it was, but I know it was with you. Because I know it wasn't in his lancing. <laughs> first time you got drunk. It was def- I don't know when it was, but I know it was... Do you remember the... You don't know when, but do you remember the fucking... I don't remember anything about it at all. I can't, like, point to the first one. First time you got drunk? Yeah. But I, it absolutely had to be with you because I remember after I graduated high school was the first time I, I, I remember marking it in my memory as the first time I ever got drunk. At your house? Like, in East Lansing. So, the first time was... Okay. No, after yeah. I graduated from high yeah. school was the first time I got drunk at East Lansing. But I had been drunk before that with you here. Did you remember here. anywhere else? No, 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 no. Nothing. Like, I can't point to... Uh, my best guess would maybe be, like, one of the New Year's Eve parties. But that's my best guess. Because I don't remember a time where, like, you and I were just chilling, drinking at all. You know what I mean? We didn't really do that. That wasn't really... I mean, we did... I think we did, like, a couple times. But, like, that wasn't really a thing at all. I remember Brandon and I talked about it when I was at his house. One time he came out. And Arthur came out. We had, like, a congregation. And huh. we, all, we definitely drank that time when we were in high school. Because Brian and I, I think we left. We left after lunch. And we went out. Someone, somehow we got someone to buy us a 30-pack. And Brian and I killed the 30-pack. Huh. And we bought, I think we bought two or three pieces from The Rock. Jesus Christ. And we had, because I remember you showed up and we were like, wow, wow, we had a pyramid. We made a whole pyramid out of beer cans. Oh, yeah, That's, I do remember that. That is the day the casual vomit was invented. No way. Yep. Casual vomit. What is the casual vomit, Preston? It's For a, those of us that don't know. I think we have explained it before, honestly. No, let's I'm, explain it in depth. Explain it again. No, no, no. You fucking, if, it's just. Just tell a story. Oh, this story? Yeah. Well, we came out of the basement after drinking a shit ton of beer, and Brandon was walking across the deck. and um, Outside on your porch? On my porch, yeah. yeah. And I just, I was looking back at him, and he just kind of kind of looks to the right, vomits, sprays vomit out of his fucking mouth, <laughs> looks forward, kind of blinks, and continues on. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> happened. He vomited casually. It's the casual vomit. It's the casual vomit. Yep. You just kind of did combing about your business. You found it and then you're casually, good. and then yeah, you're good. You can't carry on. I I did it once. Yeah. I actually did it once. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It is. It's wild. It's kind of like you don't expect it, but it happens. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's often great. It is good. Good. It's better yeah. than the like, alternative. Wow, I keep going. Yeah. Exactly. All right. It was like I had like I like not eaten much one day and I was out with my buddy Jordan who's been on the podcast before and we were at a restaurant called Old Chicago and this was at a point in time where Jordan liked to test limits hmm. so he went ahead and ordered like a monstrosity a, a monstrous amount hmm. of ap- like appetizers. Like, he ordered, like, like two or three, like, sampler plates of everything. <laughs> and then some. You know, it was all, like, fried shit. And then we had flights of beer. Do you know what a flight of beer is? Yeah. Yeah. It's like a fucking wood tray they serve you with a whole bunch of different kinds of beer in it. Like, yeah. each, there's, like, five different cups. Each one has a different cup different kind of beer and we were sitting there going through all the beers and all this fucking nasty ass fried food we leave chicago old chicago and i'm not feeling too hot he's walking just ahead of me walking to his car and i'm like oh and i look over into like you know this bush gravel area you know on the sidewalk and, like, and jordan kept walking he didn't even hear me so it must have not been that loud. And I was like, ah, stop, <laughs> threw up, looked around, nobody saw it. I saw Jordan that was just like, kept on going. <laughs> he didn't even see it. I was Casual. like, oh, yep. all right, go, just go. go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you're good. 
I felt better. Yeah, right? It was wild. I kept drinking. And by that point in time, you had already told me that story. <laughs> so I remembered. I was like, I should do the casual <laughs> moment. It was crazy. So yeah, I've done it before. But go on. I don't know. I don't remember either. I realized it as soon as I said it. Why are we talking about the casual vomit? I don't think it matters at this point. Because uh, maybe one person. It's like, fuck. <laughs> We're talking about Brandon. Hmm, and DJ. Uh, pyramid. Pyramid. When I came over near the pyramid, that's the day he perfected casual vomit. Yeah. What else happened that day? Where were you going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I was out and Arthur came out. We had like a congregation. Remember you said that? We were heading to Arthur's house. We went to Arthur's house. Oh. That's when the puke happened. Because we were on the deck. Oh, so I was there? No, you told me you were there. I I don't remember you being there. Maybe I wasn't. No, you were there. Oh, I was. No, I don't know if you were there. <laughs> no, I don't remember you being there for the actual casual. Can't breathe. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe I wasn't there. I don't no, know. you ended up going. You ended up showing up. I don't know if you were there for the bombing. For that part. Why were you guys were, going to Austin's? I, I don't know. That's the thing. So I don't know if you were there for that or not. I just remember turning around and watching him puke up to his right. <laughs> it was a casual vomit. Oh, we were ta- trying to figure out. Maybe we were trying to figure out the first time I had talked to him. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no. That was senior and how many I think it was senior year. So you were definitely drinking at that point. I never, sm- I mean, I didn't, I don't think I, s- I didn't smoke weed until I was like a month or so away from 18. Child. Yeah. No. Well, now, from our perspective. What did you smoke like? I think my girlfriend at the time's mom, like, <laughs> but she was, my girlfriend was there. Like, I remember, like, the first time I did it was, uh, fucking, oh yeah, no, 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 no. I do remember, actually. I remember that. Because I specifically remember the second time ever was with you, but the first time wasn't. But I don't, I really don't remember drinking. Oh, shit, hold on. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm, starting, oh, oh, oh. I'm starting to get something back. The Jaeger, the Jaeger, something about the Jaeger. Anyway, back to the smoking. No, I was, uh, I was, uh, at my girlfriend at the time's house and her mom was smoking a joint. But I, I didn't, I like wasn't aware of that. Her and I were like in the living room. Her mom was in the kitchen smoking a drink, and then we were all gonna go shopping at VG's. And fucking, <laughs> I walk. Uh, her and I walk into the kitchen to go to VG's, and her mom's in the smoking. Her mom tries to hand the joint to her, and she goes, "No thanks, not right now." She tries to hand it to me, and I'm like, "No thanks, I've." And I literally said, "I've never smoked anything." Uh. I said that. Dangerous. That's why you ended up smoking weed that day. <laughs> and she go. She just looks at me and goes, "Don't be a pussy." <laughs> I swear to God, she goes. Don't. She used that on me. I'm like, well, I can't not at that at that point. You can't not. You have to. You have to. You're like 17, 18 years old, and someone says, "Don't be a pussy." Mm. Especially, like, someone older than you. Like, that was the first time someone older than me had ever said, don't be a pussy. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> I took, like, one hit. And I didn't even know how to do it. I'd never smoked a cigarette. <clears throat> I didn't even know how to, like, do it. I didn't know how to do anything. The only one hit handed back to me was it. <laughs> and, like, what I remember of the rest of that day, pretty much, is driving to VG's uh-huh. and... I remember being worried about people outside of the car seeing me. So I sat real low to the point where only my eyes were visible above the back window. I remember that. And then when we walked into VG's, it's a grocery store. And we walked in on the side where there's like the produce, you know, and there was like free samples. 
<laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. So I like like walking like with them. I just like saw a free sample, grabbed it. I like then walked with them down like one aisle, and I was like, "Hold on a second, guys, I'll be right back." So I went to the produce section and started eating free samples. <laughs> And the next thing I remember is them walking up to me saying it's time to go. Mm. Apparently, I had been in the produce section the entire duration of their shopping trip. Going back. Eating all the free samples. They had done all their shopping. And it was time to go. Oh no! <laughs> I ate everything. That's all I really remember of that day. To be honest, oh. Oh. I never realized that I had like I. Had, I remember thinking, yeah, that's funny. I remember thinking that I didn't really like feel anything crazy. I didn't think I was high. You know, mm. I remember thinking that. So I didn't, I didn't remember it in the way that I do now for a long time after it happened, you know, Mm -hmm. until I like was able to have enough experience to fucking think back on that first time and be like, what did happen that day? And then be like, wait a minute, (laughs) I remember some things and I remember just eating a shit ton of free samples at the grocery store. (laughs) It was like a situation where it's not a person standing there handing them to you, you know? They're just in a fucking little thing that you open and can take. Right. So I was probably standing there. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know you were. <laughs> I don't remember it at all. Imagine walking to a grocery store and seeing me <laughs> standing there eating every single one. <laughs> Imagine how many people saw that that day. <laughs> I just go one by one. I have no idea. They could have been in there for an hour. They could have been in there for 20 minutes. They could have been in there for three and a half hours for all I know. I have no idea how much time was spent in that produce section. Oh my god. Well, I mean, there's the whole thing about DMT where uh, dimethyltryptamine is like in like every plant, but when we eat it, our stomach acids neutralize the hallucinogenic effects. So, like, every time you eat a piece of lettuce... Or so we think. Well, no, it's in it. Like, they've they've no. tested it, you know what we I mean? think it's dissolving it in our well, stomachs. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's well, why... What, well, that's kind of... I mean... Everything. It, it, well, every, all of this is a hallucinogen. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely go down that this rabbit just, hole. This piece of wood that I'm sitting next to, the only reason I see that is because my senses on this plane of existence, this is my perception. The reason I, I feel something, and I, this is how I perceive it, based off of the way I experience it. It absolutely it could be Everything. bullshit. I could be looking at something, and you don't see it the same way I do. Right. Colors. And we're both looking at the exact same thing. Right. If it remains the same, and we both see that as blue. But if it was fucking green, like, imagine that. Like, that's green, right? Yeah. Imagine if it was like that. But if it's the same, if everything's the same forever, you would never know. Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. We There's absolutely no way to know if every human being sees everything different, you know? There's really no way to know it. But, while everything could definitely be a hallucination of some sort, the part of what makes the story... I guess, of DMT so interesting to me is that uh, according to like what the scientific community accepts at the moment, which is malleable, it's always changing, so it could change in the future, what they accept at the moment is that it is in most plants and that our stomach acids neutralize the effects, but since ancient fucking times, they have had ayahuasca, which is like the one plant on the, like, planet that can be mixed with it and make it so you can 
uh, ingest it and feel its effects. And what blows my fucking mind about that is how did the fucking ancients figure out the one <laughs> fucking plant that you can mix with this one else, thing? Too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that blows my mind. Well, because they have so much time and their, their basis of granted, everything is different. Granted, yeah, but, they, but that's exactly what blows my mind is that I, I, my mind can't get on that level. You know what I mean? Where theirs naturally is. You know? It's so, uh, foreign to me. It's like, fascinating. It's a whole creation. Right? Yeah. That's structure. Yeah. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Yes. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. And it's just fucking fascinating to me. So yeah, yeah. Nice. To DJ, best friend. I'd say he was my best friend. Outside of, you know, cousin, family. Human. Non-blood. Non-blood. Best Thought friend. Our best friend. The mm-hmm. closest to blood as you can be without being blood. The only person that knows, that ever knew more about me than you. There you go. You and him and then Brandon were the three people that knew the most about me. Brandon's behind him. He may he probably was slightly ahead of you, not because certain things made certain things equal out, just because I had seen him so much. And Yeah, I you were, you had the opportunity to grow up with him. It, like you went to the same school. We, went, we grew we up. We lived there. close together. We always lived an hour apart. Yeah. Now taste wise and those kind of things is us. We have our taste and like because he got into metal, but he was mostly into rap. And like, but when I was with him, it was like same with you. I'm not like trying to compare you. No, 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 no. Like, no, I know what you're doing. You are the like the equivalent of like great relationship, like great right. friendship. You know what I mean? Right. So it was like a uh, natural. There was there's so many times where like we'd laugh about something, and fucking I'd see his laugh. Like, when I'm laughing, I would see my laugh at him. So, like, we're, like, literally creating each other. You right. You know what I mean? So, the, all the conversations and when we met, and as far as you go down, what do you think the best friend in the world? There's no other person that I had more things with. Like, if any, like, someone other than you, non-blood, died, there is nothing, no one else that could ever, that I would do no more history would be lost than it was. You know what I mean? Lost. Mm-hmm. Like the amount of history, yeah, and just not even that. Like you know, you're supposed to be love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that person that understands, like you just mesh. You yep. know, you know that. Oh yeah, no, I've. I think it's funny that as a product of having always grown up far apart from each other, but always having. It's like we always grew up far apart from each other, but every single time we saw each other, it was like in no time had passed yeah. at all. And we were just picking up right where we left yeah. off. And it was like just we you and I like always like just meshed like on a on a very like basic natural young level. But because we grew up so far apart from each other, we, we didn't have the ability to experience it on a regular basis until we were old, old enough to drive to each other, you know? So before that point, you and I both found just this, these random people that we just fucking meshed with. Like you, you hung out with DJ all the time. I hung out with Jordan all the time. You know what I mean? Jordan and I, I always said for a long time, when Jordan and I first started hanging out, first of all, the only reason Jordan and I first started hanging out was because we sat at the same lunch table in high school. And he made me laugh harder than anyone, like, besides you. Like, he could make me fucking laugh. Yeah, I thought he was funny as hell. And then we started ha- hanging out a lot in, like, in a weird series of events over the course of, like, the first, like, six months of us hanging out. We went through, like, a lot of, like, shit together. Like, not, like, between him and I, but, like, in our lives. You know? Because I remember at one point saying, like, you know, like, we've only really been, like, friends for, like, a few months, but I feel like we've gone through, like, a fuck ton of shit together. I feel like I've known you for, like, ages, you know what I mean? It was just, like, a natural mesh, and it's never fucking, even though, like, you know, he's at a very different point in his life hmm. now than I am mine. When I see him, it doesn't feel that way. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh, fuck, it's fucking dead forever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's just like that that person that you just want to be around, you want there to call, you want to love. Exactly. I know what you mean. And I think it's funny that we, in our, even though we were in separate cities, we, we kind of like found like people to do that with because we couldn't, because we were never close enough. And we were never close enough in a time period where long distance phone calls were a thing. 
yeah. before cell phones, before instant. I remember a point in time going, dude, we should, you should, we should get like a camera and like we can like, sh- like what did I say? I don't remember, but it was some weird contraption I had thought of to where like I had a camera and also some way to like, so I had a way to see you and message you at the same time. And I could, like, sit in my car and smoke and talk to you, and we could, like, smoke together even though we were an hour apart. Yeah. And we were, like, trying to come up with ways to do that. And now, yeah. it's fucking... Yeah. Done wow. and done. We could do it any day now. <laughs> literally. Like, we were try- We were coming up with that before Skype was a thing. Yeah. Just to find a way. We were... Yeah. We were just, like, trying to find a way to, like, be as close as we could on a regular basis. That's fucking crazy. <sighs> I love this. Me too. We're what brothers is? of metal. metal. Yeah. <laughs> as far as a metal pathway, <sighs> definitely. I mean, really, at the end of the day. Oh, dude. I mean, uh, pretty much all my my top five bands. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, I owe ninety percent of them. You showed them to me. Really? Yeah. You sh- you were the one that really got me into Iron Maiden. You were the re- one that really no. got me into Lamb of God. I'm not the one that got you into Maiden. You kind of okay. were. Oh. How weren't you? I, I don't remember the first time I listened to Iron Maiden. You like you to the stand Iron Maiden. Oh, I'm not. Nikes. I'm not saying. I'm not saying I didn't like listen to him first or whatever. But I wasn't like into him into him. Until I saw, like, this is a weird thing for me, dude. Like, seriously, I've, like, been thinking a lot about this. Like, I'll, like, especially when I think back about the old stuff. Like, when I first started getting into stuff. Because, God, like, in, 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 what, 2013, 14, 15, getting into a band like Iron Fucking Maiden or ACDC or Black Sabbath or Megadeth or, you know, whatever. I didn't have anywhere to base it, especially growing up in East Lansing. I was the only fucking person in my school that wore metal t-shirts to school. I was the only one. And then by, like, sophomore year, one other guy started yeah, wearing a like, Ride the Lightning shirt. Pop, 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 and that was it. One other guy had a Ride the Lightning shirt. I was the only one wearing Cannibal Corpse, Metallica, <laughs> Iron Maiden, ACDC, Black Sabbath. You know what poison. I mean? Like, Poison. Oh, fuck yeah. Like, all of it. From the gambit. So, I didn't have any rare to base anything off of like so in a lot of ways like i found what i may have heard what i'm trying to say is i may have heard something i may have like heard i may maybe, maybe i showed you i made for the first time like that okay whatever but i didn't hear them the way i hear them now until you were like this is my favorite band and showed them it's almost like things have to be put in a frame for me in a weird way and i don't know if it's good or bad or whatever but like Whenever I was young and was finding things on my, like my own, I wasn't sure how to base it. I knew how it made me feel, but I didn't know how it made anyone else feel. So as soon as I found someone that made them feel the way I felt about it, it was like, oh my god, and it exploded it. That's the way I should word it. Wow, I've never done that. That's the first time those words have ever crossed my mind, I swear to god. But yeah, that's it. That's it right there. Like, I didn't have, like, I knew I was feeling this way off this stuff, but I didn't know if that was, like, normal or if, like, it was a thing or not. Like, I didn't get it. So, like, as soon as you did, and you were like, dude, I remember. Because, like, one time you told me Iron Maiden, I think, was my favorite band. And then I went back and, like, started listening to them again. Maybe not went back, but, like, once you said that, something clicked in my head. And I was, like, I started hearing it differently for some reason. I don't know. Because I, I do remember the first time I ever heard Number of the Beast. And it was, like, I remember going, oh, my God, like, shaking. Like, I was driving around with Uncle Jason, and but he, like, left me in the car and went inside, and the music was still playing. And I was just sitting there alone, and <sighs> I think, like, I was sitting there alone, and now where the beast came on, like, yeah. the song. And I, the hair stood up, you know, everything, the whole nine. As I remember, I feel like I thought I remember you being into it before that, but maybe not. I don't know. I have no idea. No, you showed me the songs. But Lamb of God is definitely all you. I knew about Burn the Priest before I knew about Lamb of God. I remember the first time you showed me Laid to Rest. And when you turned that song on, we were at the intersection of, uh, oh, come on. Uh So, like, I I pull, 
out of your driveway, uh, head towards the cemetery and turn left. What road am I on? Your parents' old house. Oak. Richfield. So I'm on Oak and, and, and I get to the <laughs> first light with the speedway. That's Oak and Richfield? No. Yeah. With the speedway? Yeah. It's Richfield and M15. Richfield and M15. Yes. We're at that intersection. You need to like turn on hourglass or something. And after the song was over, because at that point in time, we had already heard Three Inches of Blood, and I knew that Three Inches of Blood had two singers. Now I got, now you got some. Now that was it. it. Yep. And I was like, who are their singers? I was like, yeah, I thought there were two yeah. people making that sound. I didn't think that sound could come out of one person. Remember that? Yeah, it's dude. Really we were in the Firebird. We were in the Firebird, we were, like, turning... I don't remember which way we were turning. Maybe left. I feel like we... No, I feel like we were turning left for some reason. But hearing that for the first time and going, that sound is coming out of one person, and that was it. Like, it was over. Then it was Cannibal... We got into Cannibal Corpse at that point, and it was all the extreme stuff we love. We need to go back to the neighborhood over by... We uh, should. The middle school. We used to blast... The middle... You mean the high school? No. The middle school. The middle school? Or Han... Remember the park? In the park there? area? Oh, no, yeah. Dude, oh, yeah. And then you yeah. drive around the front, and then there's that neighborhood. Yep. yep. Especially when we got, yeah, when we got parts. Wretched Spawn. Yeah, yeah Wretched like, Spawn. Oh, the Wretched Spawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because what we tried, yeah. what we intended, we would literally get in the car and intend to try to freak people out yeah. from the music we were blasting. Yeah. And so we picked Cannibal Clips, because yeah. that was the stuff that, like, <laughs> almost freaked us out. So yeah. it must freak everybody yeah. else out, right? Like, <sighs> the best. I remember just specifically we wanted the music in our car to be louder just to scare people. Yeah. Like that was the whole like if we could get a crazy look from someone that made our day. And we were, we grew up in such easy targets. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> the places we grew up are such easy targets to get crazy looks for that kind of shit. It's fun. Hell shit last time yeah. last time I was at the fucking bar with Matt they had one of those goddamn fucking stupid ass jukebox things on the wall that you can download the app yeah. and pick songs. They're picking Slayer, <laughs> Parkway Drive, and fucking like all kinds of fucked up shit. It was hilarious. <laughs> that is legit. You know what? You know, people, if you've actually made it this far, throw us a comment. Just let us be like, hey, holy shit, yes, this is just the I've game. made it. It's me. I'm here. I made it. Just. If you actually did, if you've listened this long, throw a comment, please. We love you, because you're probably the only one watching. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Just listen. Listen. You know? Hey, I'll send That'd you an cool. email. Let us know. Because really all we did tonight was tell our stories. Some of our personal stories. Mm -hmm. So, hell yeah. You know what? On that note, I think I'm going to end it. We love you guys. All of you uh, viewers. Whoever you are. Because I know we get fucking... It, at best... You know, like ten people that watch these things. <laughs> you know, and the hosts are three of them. So <laughs> yeah, I mean that's like seven. Like yeah. really, like <laughs> that you might not know. I mean, because one of them doesn't have one of our views doesn't have any views. Really? So, yeah. So I honestly have no idea, like who is and isn't at this point. <laughs> like <laughs> maybe nobody. But yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> this is like. The most fun I've had forever. So I'm loving I'm loving doing this and I have absolutely zero intention on ever stopping it. Like I wanna do this forever. Like I'm I'm seriously loving everything. Like I'm loving everything about it. I do I, I obviously do want to get better at it. But <laughs> you know, better equipment, maybe, you know, like eventually we'll have a room dedicated to it and uh more than one microphone working at once. Uh Maybe put, I'd love to put it on video and get it in more places than fucking iTunes and YouTube. That pisses me off still. But, hey, guess so, what? Yeah. I just mean, means more to come, yeah, motherfuckers. Yeah, it just means more to come. Yeah. It just means more to come, and we're yeah. not going to stop. Yeah, yeah, we're going to We're coming at you hard. Hard. <laughs> and, and hold on real quick. Uh, fucking next weekend is <laughs> the Motor City Comic Con. <laughs> next weekend. So, like. <laughs> One week from tonight, you and I will be recording an episode oh, yeah, and tomorrow yeah, going to Motor City Comic Con. Yeah, yeah, spoilers. Motor City Comic Con. And if, you go, if you're listening to this and going to the Motor City Comic Con, look for us. We'll be walking around together. One of us will be wearing a Lost in the Dark t-shirt with our logo on it. If you see us, come up to us, talk to us. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. Motor City Comic Con, 2018, Novi, Michigan. Check it out. We love you all.
Peace.